What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard Gaming and Reactions. This go around, I'll be looking at the difference between the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and England explained. So, yeah, that would be much needed. So, all right. Before we go any further, like, subscribe, notification bell. Let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome to the United Kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me, CGP Gray. The United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And Okay, so I, I, I know, you know, the England, my question is where the Great Britain part comes in. Is that just Great Britain just like England and Scotland? I'll watch. I'll stop. Often forgotten, even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard... I found that out on the, uh... Yeah, on the... Frankie Boyle audience annihilation. I made the mistake of calling them English. Sorry uh, to my Scottish viewers. Wasn't intentional, I promise. I'll try not to do it again. Again, I promise. I know, I know it was all in good-natured fun. I was just surprised that it, it was so many. I was like, wow. All right. So I tried to make sure from now on, like, <laughs> I'm going to react to the, to the comedians over there. I was taking Google first. Where is he more? <laughs> that way I can at least be right. Um. Even though I'm ignorant of the person, I can at least know where he's from. Are the English as slave driving colonial masters? No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Okay. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain. I was going to say, was Northern, Engl uh, Northern Ireland added later or something like that? But I... It... Such as the... Sorry for the double pauses, but I get, you know, 2000, you know, almost... Yeah, two thousand over two thousand years of history. It kind of, yeah, it kind of. A, a lot of things happen, I guess. The Isle of Wight, part of England. The Welsh Isle of Anglesey. The Scottish Hebrides. The Shetland Islands. The Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country. Like Great Britain, it is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on it two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the Mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the <laughs> coast of France. But that's a story for another time. To review. The two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this, we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of world's land and governed nearly a fourth of world's people. Holy Most Jesus! Wow! Good lord! That's a lot of landmass. When everybody knows about Australia and New Zealand and Papua New Guinea, or at least I know that Papua New Guinea is, who was it? Uh, was it Admiral Nelson? Admiral Cook? 
trying to remember which one it is that actually uh, discovered them. I think it was Cook, because he got the Cook Islands over there, if I'm not mistaken. God, it's been so long. Like, I feel, like, embarrassed I don't remember this. Because down here you got the... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, like I said, Cook. He took and discovered the western edge over here. Or, the, yeah, the western edge. Whereas the Dutch had the north and... Yeah, north, or the western... The, this edge over here, the Dutch had... Anyways, Cook, I, I know he took and was over there. Uh, same thing with Papua New Guinea. I know, he, you know, there was, I didn't realize there were so many African countries that uh, England had been, uh, either conquered or been to, or colonized, I should say. God, that's a ton. Fiji and my goodness the crazy thing is man what's so embarrassing I, I grew up reading stories like the, um, the mutiny of the bounty and stuff like that treasure island I, I grew up reading that like loved that kind of Robinson Crusoe which I can't remember if that was a I believe it was an English author yeah again bad memory yeah Daniel Defoe I, yes, you're going to see, like, whoop. It's because I actually Googled a minute, because I'm like, okay, I, it's so far back there. Let me see if I can't pull it out, the roll, the, the file on cabinet that's way in the back of the head. Um, but, yeah, Robinson Crusoe, I mean, I, I, re I loved reading stuff like that, and I loved reading about history and everything. So the fact that I can't remember this as well as I used to, I'm embarrassed, to be honest with you. I really am. Crazy. That is, that's a lot of places. That's a lot of land. You're the fourth world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want to be nations struck a deal with the Empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered... Yes, yeah, uh, divine right or something like that. ...with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation sole, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion, Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth Realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong I to the I did not know that. That's, that's crazy. I did not know that. I knew they had all, you know, they, they've gained independence or whatever, but I didn't realize that they still recognized the cr That's, that's interesting. It did, that's, even if they hold no real authority, the fact that it's still recognized, that, you know, I wonder how many of the citizens in some of these countries, well, most of them probably aren't as daft as we are over here, so... The Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the Crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, every 
everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Equatoria and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena. Wait, wait, wait. So the Cayman Islands, which is a, a tax haven for people that are trying to take and hide money and stuff like that. They still under the rule. That's I. That's interesting because that's um. Does the crown get a cut of that? They can't. It it, it they got to take and the, the the financial stuff has to be different because there's no way people will hide money over there, the way they do, at the expense of being taxed by a different country. Elena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan de Kuna, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the Crown, which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the Crown and the British Isles are the Crown Dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the Crown are the Commonwealth Realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British Overseas Territories. Thank you very much for watching. No, that's not confusing at all. The Great Britain, UK, England. That part's simple enough. You add all the other stuff in, or the ones that are basically they either recognize them as the as the heads of state, or they're still depend. You know, they still are basically owned by the. That's holy crap! I. I feel dumb. That's all I can say. Jesus. I gotta take in hit history books again. I gotta find my library card and dust it. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. I have Google. We have technology. So, very interesting though, because it's. I didn't realize. I knew I know like especially in the Caribbean I know there's a lot of islands it's like you got the US uh, the US Virgin Islands I know there's British Virgin Islands I didn't realize with like Cayman Islands and stuff like that that they were still dependent or they were overseas territory you know there was overseas foreign territory or whatever basically it's still I figured it was something they just it's I don't think sometimes overlook me I'm trying to explain it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm making myself sound dumb. Well, that's not very smart. Sometimes two plus two equals four. You just don't see it. That's what happened. As I was taking it, explaining it, it's like, wow, you're an idiot. Cause it even look on the maps, but like Cayman islands and stuff like that. Cause that's not, I don't think that's, the Caymans aren't British. Doesn't say like British territory or something like that. It, but as far as like looking on a map, but of course, and again, you got Google and be smart, look shit up. But anyways, I digress before I make myself like any more of an idiot than I already do. Jesus. <sighs> um, I didn't realize how many countries that England still held as overseas territories not only not only in the caribbean but like even in like the indian ocean and over in the pacific the pacific as well that's i know the u.s has like the u.s virgin islands we've got guam we've got uh a couple other places it's not near as many as it used to be it's nowhere near that many i don't believe anymore like it's basically the u.s virgin islands and then guam and uh yeah that's really we got a couple little things out in the pacific but it's not it's not that many and my goodness that's that's incredible though it really is that there's still that many countries that are still dependent on the crown. There's still that many countries that actually recognize the crown as their head of state, even though they're autonomous. They're not, it, there's, they don't, they, the crown doesn't hold any power in the, within their borders. But that's still an interesting bit that you don't, you don't, you don't realize. 
Sorry if I've made you go, what the hell? Why don't he just shut up? Apologies. It's a little bit long-winded. Thank you for watching. Thank you, especially if you made me, if you made me, if you heard me, listen to me, make a fool of myself as I was working it out in my head and realizing I sounded like an idiot. Thank you for keeping through all that. Roast me in the comments. Feel free because I deserve it at this point. God. <laughs> Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.